Give it to me straight. Give it to me honest. Tell me exactly how you really feel right now. Give it to me straight. Give it to me honest. Let me hear the truth. I want you think I would really rather hear. Seem to be okay. To have a one around. Do of a kind with both feet on the ground. Just beneath the surface. Corner of your mind. There were doubts and fears, problems here that I can never find. Give it to me straight. Give it to me honest. Tell me exactly how you really feel right now. Give it to me straight. Give it to me honest. Let me hear the truth, not what you think I really rather hear. Guess what's wrong? It's a mystery to me. Reaching and I'm searching, something I can do. Though I wrote this song instead of guessing wrong, I need you to guess true. Give it to me straight, give it to me honest. Tell me exactly how you really feel right now. Give it to me straight, give it to me honest. Let me hear the truth. I want you think I would really rather hear. Need to know how you feel. This love of ours for real. Is today all we have? The future sign of seal. Give it to me straight. Won't you give it to me honest? Tell me exactly how you really feel right now. How's everybody doing tonight? It's Alex Vincent. You're live on the final note. I'm here once again with Joe Davison. Hello. Hello. Well, Hello. I'm sorry. Yeah, That's I was, fine. was sucking that mic off. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, sorry for the false start again. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this shit out. This is a new kind of thing for me. This is only <laughs> episode two. Uh, I, I added a limiter to my Here's real good tech talk for everybody. I added a limiter to my master output, which yeah, should be uh, should uh, hopefully make it sound a little more smooth with everything that we're trying to, trying to do tonight. We got live music once again in the studio tonight. Uh, a guy named Denny Dwyer, who I've been working with at the studio for the past uh, well, this is the second time we worked together. We're up over about six months. We've been working on these sixteen songs. Like once a week, I'm gonna that what you heard to open the show was one of those songs. I love uh, that man. Yeah, he's I, got a great vibe. I saw really like music. a 1970s Dolly Parton film with that yeah. song. Give it to me straight. Yeah, I, Burt he's, Reynolds, he, Dolly Parton. He's got a lot of influences in his music. Um, kind of a wide range of songs from that time. That's uh, great. I love him. It. Yeah, so we're gonna hear a couple of songs from him tonight. I'm gonna be talking about. Um, <clears throat> Days of the Dead, which I just came back from uh, this weekend in Atlanta. This was the third time that I had done the Days of the Dead show. 
Well, the third time I've done the Atlanta show. They also have shows in Indianapolis. How well, was I, it? It was fun. It was fun. What was the crowd like? I mean, because Atlanta's popping right now in the film industry, so I would imagine yeah. that cons are just raking it in up there. Yeah, it was packed. Uh, it was packed. The fan base there is always very good, dedicated, big-time horror fans. Uh, they like to party. It's a big party. Yeah. It, it really good, carries on there. Um, but everybody was very, you know, appreciative and couple of people dressed up like Chucky and <laughs> as always, per usual. Always, I, I drove up there. By the way, guys, in the studio with us also is a uh, local tattoo artist uh, and he-man, Mikey Wells, <laughs> sitting in with us. Uh, we're filming the show. We're filming more of the show this week, so I, I might put up all the video of this. We'll see. I got enough that I'm trying to negotiate. Uh, producing this by myself and trying to put live music out uh, under the same channels that my limiter and everything is set for spoken word stuff. Uh, um, yeah. All right. I'll Thank move you. on from that. Um, uh, more about Atlanta, though. Yeah. Well, um, go ahead. What was the highlight? The hi- a highlight? Um, hanging out with Felissa Rose. is just, She is she is a firecracker. Yeah, she's I, our I, guest tonight, right? She is our guest tonight. She's from Sleepaway Camp. She is uh, yeah, responsible for one of the most surprise endings to any film, let alone a horror film. Uh, <laughs> she she is a delight, though, and, and the only woman I've ever characterized as a firecracker because uh, she fits That's, it. She yeah. really does. She's uh, super sweet and generous to her fans and appreciative and fun and uh, dresses up real nice. And, yeah, yeah, she's not bad looking. No, she's beautiful. So, yeah, she's going to be on later. We're going to talk to her about uh, her career and her life and this weekend at Days of the Dead. I drove up to this one. Yeah, it's only nine hours. Uh, yeah, it was about seven and a half. Yeah. Uh, I drove with the two Chucky dolls in my back seat. <laughs> I, I had the animatronic doll back there along with the Cult of Chucky good guy doll that I have after, uh, you know, 30 years. Do they, in do they send you more? Can you request, like, yo, I need another truck? No, it was, it was tough this to get that. Molested. It was tough to get that one, you know? Yeah. Uh, Anybody try to steal them from many. you? They don't make that many for every film, so everybody wants to get their hands on one. It took me 30 years and four films to get one. I naturally assume you just have them laying around the house. Yeah, yeah I, I figured you had, yeah. like, 50 of them. I, I have two of them. I have two really, really nice ones. Yeah. One, one is an animatronic one that this guy Chad Santo made. Uh, actually, on the YouTube page, you can see there's a, a little video of them. I don't think I had the animatronic moving, but he moves and he blinks and he talks. Oh, that'd be awesome. And uh, when I'm driving up, I stop. And at, surreal for you, driving across country at 30 with the Chucky doll that talks. Yeah, I forget that he's back there. And I was, <laughs> part, part of me was hoping to get pulled over. but uh, I, I did, however, drive through McDonald's twice. And the, the, every time I do that, what? The, I that forget I have those dolls in the back seat. For one thing, I know I, I'm really, really trying to get serious about this. Okay. Yeah. I, I did. I got <laughs> grilled chicken and stuff. McDonald's. I got grilled chicken. I'm doing what I can, but when you're driving seven hours, it's tough. You gotta, you know. Yeah. It's, I didn't. I didn't pack a. Uh, a yeah. And when you gonna sandwich. stop at an IHOP by yourself? Yeah. That's in the middle when, of Georgia. That's lonely. That's, that sounds that's like sad. you're talking from experience. Yeah. No. Shut up. You don't know me. But I pull up to McDonald's and I forget that I have those dolls there until I see the girl in the window like, oh, hell no. Ah! <laughs> he got Chucky in the back seat. Yeah, that's Stacey. Calling other people She's over. Cool. I love and her. then I have it on and it moves, you know, and oh. the eyes move and that's it. They're done. <laughs> Dude, They're we done. should They're videotape my burgers at me. you going to drive throughs with the Chucky doll. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll do that for an episode. Oh, <laughs> man, that'd be hysterical. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. I know. I order good a good guy burger. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good guy burger. <laughs> uh, Days of the Dead was a good time, though. I got to see uh, Eddie Furlong was there again, and my buddy Kane Hodder and Sid. And I love Kane, Bill man. Mosley. Nicest dude. Kane's the best. He's going to be on the show in a couple weeks. Oh, that's awesome. He's got great stories and you know, real good guy. Great with the fans. Um, Oddly enough, I feel like Hatchet was like one of his breakout roles. Yeah. You know, even though he's been Jason three, four times already. Well, we were talking about acting because he just had some role, and I'm a, I'm sorry that I don't know which, which film he was talking about, but it was an acting heavy kind of scene where he had to go from zero to sixty in a crying scene. Wow, you know, which is like much more challenging than yeah. when, when they cut and and you get yourself ready and then they come on and you're in tears. 
you know, when you have to go from just talking conversation into tears, it's difficult. Um, but but he said that that's something he was just doing and something. So I hear a cry. I'm glad he's always coming. working. A cry I think we challenge. should have a cry challenge. A cry off. A cry off. I might win, man. I got <laughs> a, might, I got a lot to pull. I from. think we just stare at each other till we cry. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a laugh contest, but right. a cry contest. Cry contest. It's a cry off. I All love right. it. We'll get Billy Zane involved. Yeah, yeah. Kind of fucked up with Billy Zane. I, I, How? I, I thought, I thought he was. Did in you think 20, it was someone else? I thought he was in an episode of, or a season of Twenty Four. I really thought that he was this one <laughs> villain in Twenty Four, and I said, I said to him outside, "Oh, I loved you in Twenty Four. Huh? Wasn't on that show. Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, uh, and that, and that never happens to me because I'm not, I wasn't in enough for people yeah. to confuse it. But, uh, yeah. although I guess some people thought yeah. I was in like, the I loved you in the something. omen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I hear the shining sometimes. And I was oh, like, I wasn't even what? born. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't even, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even born. He thinks you're Danny. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's the yeah. ball. It's the ball. You're just one of those of creepy looking fucking kids. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Well, at least you're not Elijah Wood. Fuck Elijah Wood, man. Fuck that guy. Fuck him. Elijah Wood got everything I ever auditioned for when I was a kid. <laughs> That's insane. He got The Good Son, Radio Flyer, uh, uh, a bunch of others. Whatever Dude, he was I, in as a kid, yeah. I auditioned for. A Bronx Tale, I think he got. Lord uh, of the Rings. I didn't audition. I was out <laughs> yeah. by that. So you, you could have been a hobbit, bro. I yeah, could have been, been a hobbit. hobbit. Someone, someone floated a theory by me this weekend that all child actors are short, that are are. are Growth gets stunted. That's a theory? Uh, is, is that Evidently. from smoking on set? Well, I didn't know. Like, I don't, is it like I, a fact? I don't but. know. This is what some guy said to me. I, you know, people say shit to you when you're sitting there all weekend. And, and yeah, someone said, oh, short. you're short, too. You know, they, they always <laughs> open with that. Well, like that. You, yeah. oh, you didn't really grow up much, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I the, the other one, the other one I always get is, uh, oh, man, you were the cutest kid. <laughs> like, oh, what happened? Thanks. Yeah, yeah now like, I smoke guys, and drink beer. Fuck off. Yeah, older guy saying, hey, you can sign this for me, slugger. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Tyke. Yeah. <laughs> Rubs your head. Hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> your mom around? <laughs> uh, yeah, Eddie Furlong was there also. I got to hang out with him a little bit. And Tony Todd, who is going to be on the show, I, I asked him, I, you know, Tony's a, a pretty big star. He's been in a lot of things. And uh, I also heard that that Candyman is coming out or whatever, so it would be cool to have him on. And, is he, is he in Candyman, the new Candyman? I have Man? no idea. I'd like to have him here and Why ask him. Why are they doing him. that? Let's ask him. I'll tell you said, what. He, you know, he's, we're good friends. He said he'd be happy to come on for me. So I, They've we'll really crossed the line with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, man. Yeah. Because pulling Robert Englund out of that role after fucking 30 years or whatever, just stupid fucking Hollywood move. Yeah. Stupid move. I don't understand why they did it. I don't get it. Well, these remakes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I have mixed I feelings know. on that movie. I don't, yeah. I don't hate it. But the the, uh, the one remake, with, the I, I never saw it. Oh, actually, man, I, I just it wasn't Robert Englund. It wasn't Freddy yeah. Krueger to me. You could have ma- named it a whole new sh- movie. Yeah, and no one would have given a shit. Yeah, but no one would have went to see it. Right, that could be true too. <laughs> well, yeah. the, all they're cashing in on is well, that's what I'm saying. Like all they're cashing in on is the name of the product. And they don't give a shit they, who they put in it. They yeah. know that us idiot horror fans will go watch it. Absolutely. Because that's what we do. Yeah. And I will. Yeah. Oh. Every time. Oh, let's remake Evil Dead. Yep. Went saw that too. Why? Yeah. Why? I think, I think someone else is trying something like that pretty soon too. <laughs> but we do have some pretty good news for Chucky fans. <laughs> As I just blew out your yeah. speakers Blow by out overmodulated news. news flash. And you know it's real important though when it's way too fucking loud. Um <laughs> Child's should Play should be screaming now. Child's Play, the T V series, is coming to sci fi. We are in development with sci fi. Let's see if I can do this. Better. Uh, you know, I I love the idea of uh, eight hours or whatever of Ch- of Chucky coming uh, up to tell the daughter, story more. I, I've told you this more than once, but in all seriousness, my three year old daughter watches Cult of Chucky because it's on Netflix. Yeah, that's the one you're in the and Simon, the Santa Asylum, right? Yes. Yeah, she watches that. Yeah, religiously, dude. Cool. I cannot wait for her to meet you because she'll she's gonna be so confused. Uh-huh. You know, well. but she does. She loves Chucky, man. She's like Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. How old is she? Three. Kids love Chucky. Up up yeah. to a certain age, there's a 
They're not an age scared before they're scared. No, but then around seven to ten, they might have different feelings about that. Oh, maybe. But if they grew up watching it, I mean, I yeah, meet kids sure. all the time that that love Chucky. They're kind of like you know uh, infatuated with the image of the doll. I think and just looking at them like. I mean, kids like dolls, you know. This was yeah. a ki- children's toy, to, you know. That she was the, like Annabelle. the appeal, the colorful you know, appeal of them. She doesn't like Annabelle. No, Annabelle's scary. Chuck Annabelle's scary. creepy looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I put totally the camera over here, doll. you know, and my head's going to be turned to it the whole time. Oh maybe yeah, I, sh- I didn't even think about maybe that. Maybe I should sit like we this. Should've... But then yeah, I'm blocking we... out Mikey's good looks. <laughs> yeah, well, you're the star, bro. Well, still, I Joe, did you have we'll a my buddy doll? Uh, yeah. I mean. I wanted one. I never got one uh, because it was expensive, and my parents didn't buy expensive things. Yeah, every everybody after Child's Play ripped their buy my buddy's heads off and buried him in their backyard. And Jeez. in a sense, Chucky killed my buddy. It's not a vampire, yeah. kind of. Yeah, I know, I mean, but they I, were freaked yeah. out. I was a yeah. bit more morbid, so I mean, my yeah. pocket knife got glued to his hand and all that. <laughs> you made That's him awesome. a killer. Fuck yeah! Oh, all I right. have, That's okay. A- so I have these two awesome. They're like sixteen inch plush. Jason and plush uh, Michael Myers, but they have plastic heads and hands and feet. Oh. So, okay, they're really cool things, man. My daughter plays with them like they're dolls, man, with the machetes and everything. So she has Jason and Michael Myers, both have machetes, and she plays with them constantly with her dolls. Wow. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting kid. Yeah. I, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. We do have people writing stuff. Sorry, oh, it's wow. hard to yeah. see these chats. Well, he was in a Bronx uh, Tale. Thanks. He was in a Bronx <laughs> Tale. Okay. Uh, thank God it's sci-fi. Uh, thank God it's sci-fi. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy about that. I, it's gonna be from what I understand, probably after 10 p.m. So Chucky can still say fuck, which yeah. is infinitely important. If Chucky can't say fuck, we don't have a show. Yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty true. sure. So <laughs> I, I think that's poster. gonna work out. It's just Chucky's face, and then just says fuck on the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah. Just shorten it. Get it gets shortened every time. Don't fuck with the Chuck. And it's just fuck. Don't fuck with the Chuck. Child's play. Fuck. Chuck. <laughs> fuck Chuck. That might work. Yeah. Uh, oh, what is, what genre Chuck. is it going to be hitting besides like horror? Is it uh, going to be a little more serious, or is it throwing a more comedy element like well, it uh, was for a while? I'll, uh, you know, I think there's always going to be one-liners and little laughs mm-hmm. here and there. Yeah, it, because it's about Don a doll, Mancini has a you know devious, dark sense of humor. Yeah. So, you know, so I, I do think, think that's going to be Don part of it. And Henry Manfredini. Yeah, two totally different guys yeah, that have nothing to do with composer. each other. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, yeah, uh, what I love about what Don has done, and this isn't just me kissing his ass, uh, besides the fact that I genuinely love him, um, I love the idea. And you know, we made seven of these films. Now they're going to make a television series. They've all been very, very different. Um, so different that they lose maybe a chunk of fans every time because people want the same thing over and over again. But if, if we're going to continue to reinvent a story with a two and a half foot killer doll, it has to go different ways, and I and I love the addition to the multiple Chuckies and him splitting his soul into you know. First of all, it gives Andy more to do and more of a challenge, but yeah. but it just kind of how about Miss, gives Miss him a little Tilly? more. Is she coming around? That's the plan. The plan is the intention is to keep the gang together. Because she's is two what characters. I know. But you never know in this business, and you never know what's going to happen. But I do think I do hope. That uh, we're all involved. Dude, you better... If you're not involved, I think that's just bullshit. And I'm not just saying that because I'm your friend. I'm just saying that because you're such an intricate part of the story. Yeah. Well, I I would hate to see Andy's story end trapped in a, that room. And I don't think it will. So, no, I, no. I think that that's the plan. Yeah. I'm on a diet anyway, just in case. Stopping at McDonald's. <laughs> well, it, that was before the sci-fi announcement. Now I'm... Now, I'm, now they're like, lose weight. That's a story. Yeah. Now you're taking it seriously. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wither away yeah. each week that I'm here. You're like Harbor getting Hellboy. I, I mean, Mikey can train me. This, this guy is in the gym all the time. It's going to happen. Yeah? All right. That's going to happen. <laughs> so what else is going on? The Super Bowl's coming up this weekend. Yep, yep. Tom Brady at it again. Yeah, you know, uh, people hate him. He's yeah, hated. He is hated. But I'm from North Jersey, and and we hate Boston teams just by default. Yeah, you have to. I, I you have to. Yeah. and it's hard to root for someone who is that 
handsome and has that beautiful of a mm-hmm. wife mm-hmm. and that much yeah. money and a fairy tale life and yeah, uh, but but he's you know arguably the, the greatest quarterback of all time. Uh, Sounds yeah. like a total villain. Yeah, yeah right. He, what's he doing in real life? That's what I want to know. I don't know. What devious bullshit is he concocting when he's not on the field? Why, you think he's, like, deflating balls right now or something? <laughs> no, I, no I, you know, like, what underground... Shit is he into? Yeah, What's going to come out someday is, about yeah. Tom Brady? That yeah, he's, he's, like, really head of the Illuminati. Selling or children shit. or something yeah. horrible? Well, Addicted that's... to cuckold porn? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, Guys, gross. we don't believe this stuff. We're just, yeah. we're just no, we're kidding. just talking shit, no. man. Um, but uh, I have to root for him because my girl is from uh, Boston. So, oh. whoop, yeah, we'll see. The, don't touch you, that. Even your mic doesn't like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one likes Tom Brady. Yeah. Um, so I got to root for New England, you know, because that's where my girl's from, and I and I will. Well, I am a a betting man, and I like to bet on the Super Bowl. So in that sense, I might end up rooting for them also. Yeah. Uh, I do like Gurley, and I and I like Goff, and I, and I would like their team to win. Yeah. Despite the fact that they shouldn't even be there, as we all know, <coughs> anyone who saw yeah, that scene. Yeah, I don't think game. the Rams should be there at all, man. And and if you watch that play, I saw I saw it like fifty times. Yeah. I, you know, I was watching the game, and I was like, I, "This is a bull, this is bullshit. How can the referees allow this? To how can anyone in the stands allow that to happen? Who the hell knows." You know, and then that's what I just because there's realized. Mon- there's money laid out right like, again. Well, and allegedly, that's what I, I realized. Know shit. You know I'm what? not saying this anything I know, but all, there's money laid out all up. across that field. It's all made you know, up. Everybody's got. It's all made up. So, so yeah. it doesn't matter who's going to win the Super Bowl. No, because it's already bought and paid for. Yeah, you know, Coca Cola wins. The commercials are always fun. Yeah, and kind of a big deal. So, who's like doing the, the halftime show? Anyone know? No, so, they're doing wait, a wait, tribute Maroon to Maroon Five or something. Maroon, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> I think I heard that. Yeah. The weather's like minus fifty degrees right now. What do you? They're not doing anything in Atlanta. It's, yeah, it's cold. We were, yeah. Well, that was another thing when I was in Atlanta. There was, uh, there was, people there scoping out the hotel, booking things for whatever festivities they had that weekend for the Super Bowl, plus yeah. in preparation for this weekend, where I guess every hotel including the Sheridan that we were at, is going to be completely sold out. Oh, man. And there was a dude there who is working somehow with that. And I met him previously at a convention. But I I found out this time that he is a flight attendant on Air Force One. And he sees Trump all the time, works with him directly. Best friends with Trump. You know, he said Trump's the nicest guy in the world, which... You know, when you want everyone to love you, I, I'm, I assume you are I'm a nice guy friend, to people. I'm the best of friends. <laughs> There's nobody more conservative than me. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, nobody builds walls better than me. No one's a better friend than him. No one. Yeah, no, no one's a better on a plane than him. Because <laughs> nobody's ever had crowds like Trump has had. <laughs> uh, the shutdown's over, too, temporarily. Which, yeah, uh, what does that mean? Nothing. Without getting into that too far, yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem like... You know, this it's might all, have, this it doesn't saying. seem like Super it's going to be resolved. The government, it's all weak guys. Just hold on. It's still ent- really it's all it's entertainment. Yeah, yeah, this is what it's all about. Just hold on. Do whatever you're going to do. It doesn't matter anyways because tomorrow you get hit by a truck, and that's yeah. what the show's about. The show is about that today. Yeah. We, we 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 did Days of the Dead this weekend, and and thinking about what we're going to talk about tonight. What's that like to get invited to? To to get invited to? He says out loud to the universe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm never you want to get to that? Is I, that what you're maybe, saying? Yeah, maybe. I'm sure there's Stranger Things fans there. I'm we, sure we, there gotta, is. we can make it happen. Yeah, I mean, Jim brings me all the way out to New Mexico. Yeah, but it was a Comic Con. I bet Stranger I Things know, is harder. Same, Stranger yeah, Things it's, does. It's yeah, it's horror. You got to get us a job yeah. on that show, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I listen. It's not my show. It, it doesn't it's, matter. It's, you got to <laughs> come on. Joe. Whoever you audition for, you can, yeah. this will propel my career right. like crazy. I'll just tell him. If I were in Stranger Things three. You're oh, you're man. Joe well, Davidson of Stranger Things, correct? Yeah, I mean, yes. you are, yes, <laughs> you I are am. I of am. Stranger Things. <laughs> well, I'll call Sean Levy and the and the Duffer Brothers and see what they say, man. You know, I, I hugged them both once, so maybe that means something. It might also mean why I died. Can you CC me on that email? Sure. <laughs> we do a group text, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah, just gonna hold wonders. on. I'm gonna text Winona here real quick. She's real quick if you could. Things. If yeah. you could, yeah. She's or, my or, too, uh, Oh, what's her name? You got the girl. She's running Natalie that Dreyer. thing. No. Oh. Eleven's running that whole thing. Oh, yeah. She's I don't to, know. Natalie's, to her agent. Natalie's crawling up the thing, you know, the ladder, which kills me. These kids, man. You're like best friends with her too, right? Uh, Millie Bobby Brown? Millie yeah. Bobby Brown. Yes. That's her. 
Uh, actually, I'm with her agent, uh, who she was with right before she got Stranger Things. Yeah. So now I'm with that agent, and I got Stranger Things. So next, maybe I'll get to wear a pink dress. I'd love to just rip Howard Stern off right now and do his impression of Millie Bobby Brown's agent, which is so <laughs> fucking funny. Let's do it. No, no, I, I, I'm not going to do oh, that. Okay. But, but he is so funny. He's always pretending to be her agent. Like, <laughs> this, this fucking Millie Bobby Brown. Let me try. Anyway. No, no. But, uh, Dude, she's great, man. She's, she is. She's awesome. She she's was a sweetheart. I met her. I met her. She came out of her van. She was leaving. She saw my girlfriend there, who was excited to see her. She got. Ex- she came out, and 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 her little sister is a huge fan of Chucky. We just yeah. said the word Chucky, and the kid was like smiling and freaking out. So, yeah, it was cool. She was real sweet. Yeah, she's great. So, Alex, I, I, you're I, best friends with her now. Uh, yeah, we're yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I didn't get the contact info. I didn't get it I got to get that agent. I felt weird asking an 11-year-old girl for a number. Is 11 11? (laughs) Yeah. I think she is now. No, now she's like 13, I think. Oh, she was 11 when she got the job. Maybe. I don't know. I I assumed like all child actors are like adults, but really short. Someone out there is listening. She's She's like 25, isn't she? I don't know. But I loved all the kids. Gatton, I loved the most. He and I hung out the most on set. Whether he wanted to hang out with me or not, I just followed him around. I was like, hey, kid, what's up? He's like, leave me alone. Uh, no, but he was really great, man. And Lucas, they were all great. I met them all. I met them all, man. The only one I didn't meet was Winona. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Wait, I thought you were best friends with her. I can't tell anyone I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how serious it is. Yeah, it's sh- oh, shit, low key. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's me, her, and Tim Burton. We all have a. Timmy B. Oh, homeboys. Yeah, TB, I call him. Yo, TB. So, yeah, being that I did Days of the Dead this weekend, and I was thinking about a topic that we could talk about, um, and I didn't have really any time to prepare for the show. Again, I feel like my P's and B's are over-modulating something with this mic. I'll work it out. Um, I didn't have much time to prepare, so I thought about a topic that uh, yeah, I don't need to research or or think too much about because it's... uh, just, you know, something that we all relate to and that I, I certainly have dealt with a lot, which is death. You know, we just did Days of the Dead. So I thought I would discuss death tonight, and we're going to come back and do a little bit of that. So sorry, the show is usually pretty light, but, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. it's a topic that's worth talking about. was pretty dark with the politics. Was it? I don't know. It went off a little bit. It was you know. a little bit. The show's a little bit of everything. It's not yeah. anything. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's not anything. It's, it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> it's nothing and everything. It's all nothing at once. and everything all at the same time. Uh, all right, so let me see. I'm going to play a song, I think, and then we'll come back and we will discuss that. Let's see. What do you guys want to hear tonight? I got, uh, I got a good song. Ooh, play that one song by that one dude. All right, that's what I'll do. Uh, this is a song called Grape Drink by... You are a toy. Uh, We recorded this at my studio, AV Productions, avproductionsonline.com in Clearwater, Florida. And this is You Are a Toy with Grape Drink. Open 9 to 5. Open 24-7, really. really.
Hi, this is Kane Hodder, and you're listening to The Final Note. Keep listening, or I'll kill you. Ah, uh, my buddy Kane. Love him. It's great to see him. Okay, so the topic t- tonight is death and loss, um, which I know that I have certainly had a good amount of, and I, I'm sure some of our listeners have as well. It's uh, certainly what, you know, last week uh, we discussed division and uh, different the differences that we all have and the different ways we approach certain things. But there's certainly nothing we have more in common than death. Um, that, that is true. Everyone we know and all of us will die. We all yeah. have that in common. Yeah, we will. We all have different ways of uh, dealing with it or, or different levels of fear about it, different beliefs that... Um, I never thought about it till I had a child. Really? Never gave it a second thought, man. Really? Yeah, no, I was living in me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and then I had a, I had my daughter, and then I was like, "Fuck." What was the first, like, death that you remember in your life? The first, like, profound death. You know, our grandparents die, and 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 not that that's not painful. And I know certain people are closer with their grandparents than others, but I I do think that we all grow up kind of expecting our grandparents to die. That next to a goldfish and the puppy that's what yeah. we expect is coming next I, you, know? you know i don't even know my family that well so i don't even like that doesn't even bother me you know uh i'd have to say i had a very good friend of mine named michi falvo and she was i remember michi mm-hmm. she, that's the death that really opened my eyes which wasn't very long ago three either. years yeah three years ago, i remember man. that yeah i was uh i was in high school um and there was an art teacher that I had gotten really close with. He was, uh, my dad knew him previously, uh, and he was just a really kind of cool, laid-back guy. He was the art teacher. Sal Perena was his name. And I would t- I took his class for study the first couple of years because I knew I could just go there and do whatever I want. Like, you know, I, I sucked in high school. I didn't give a shit at all. I got failed um, out of art. My art teacher told me I'd never be an artist. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Thanks. And then he became a good filmmaker. Well, my creative writing teacher also told me I'd never be a writer. Oh, great. Isn't high school, isn't high school splendid? 29 screenplays. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I I remember I was really close with Sal. He was, uh, he was a good dude and helped me in school when he knew that I, you know, desperately didn't want to be there. Um, and I had a friend named Chris Lamise who was very dark, kind of wore dark clothes, listened to Nine Inch Nails like me. And... Uh, he came. I saw him walking through the hallway in the morning. He was like, "Did you hear about Sal?" And I said, "What?" He goes, "He's dead," <laughs> just like that, like real hard, hardcore. I was like, "Whoa!" Uh, you know, and and it was a weird story too. He was driving away from his house at four thirty in the morning with two different shoes on, and he hit the back of a garbage truck, and he Sounds died. Like he was it, sleepwalking. It was crazy. It was it was it was really bizarre. Yeah. Um. So that was like the first time that I that I had. I had dealt with it, and that, and I. This was in high school. I was a really big uh, Doors fan. I was a huge obsessed with Jim Morrison. Wow, from the Doors to Nine Inch Nails. Well, Nine Inch Nails I found when I was like eleven, twelve years old, and that was always there. Um, I absolutely always loved that mu- music and related to it. But I also fa- found the Doors around fourteen, fifteen. Um, I know I was familiar with them earlier, but I, but I really got into them at that time, and. I've since kind of stopped listening to The Doors because of how obsessed Jim was with death. Um, it made me obsessed with death. And, and I, you know, I, I hate ever referring to myself as a poet, but as someone who has written thousands of poems, um, I, I don't know, I related to him very much and his music, and I was doing a lot of psychedelic drugs at that oh. time, like mushrooms and acid. And I just did mushrooms for the first time on New Year's. You did? Yeah. That's fun. Great, man. You had a good time? I the, the best t- day of my life. Yeah. Yeah, best however many hours. I mean, the, the truth is, uh, you know, I do recommend that people try it in their lives. I think I think psychedelic drugs, when used in small amounts in your life a couple times, yeah. uh, I think is very helpful towards, you know, speaking about doors, opening the doors of perception, I, and man will see, see anything, things though. as they truly are, infinite. You know, that, yeah. that was... Uh, 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 philosophy that really drove Jim Morrison's life, and uh, you know, I, I think be- through my obsession with him and, and my poetic sensibility at the time, 
and the fact that I was doing a, a lot of psychedelic drugs. At the, I mean, not a lot. I mean, I was experiencing psychedelic drugs at the time. And uh, I don't know, I thought I was going to die at 27. I was, like, convinced of it. Uh, Why? And, I don't know. I just thought I was... I, I thought I was deaf, too. I started working day. when I was five years old. I grew up yeah. faster than I should have in Hollywood some ways. Life. I mean, I never lived in Hollywood, and I never got into the, that kind of stuff. But, but, but I did. Uh, I did think that I was gonna just burn out and die at twenty-seven. Um, man, that's harsh. That's heavy. Yeah, I was. I did the same thing, man. When I was in high school, I thought I was dead soon. Did you? And it came to me. High school sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, oh, this music is perfect. I, yeah. I, uh, I, I did though. I really thought that that was going to happen to me, and um, it didn't stop me from still wanting to experience life. And, and uh, <laughs> I feel like we should have the cry off right now. This, the cry, this the is cry a good, a good uh, segue to the cry off. <laughs> no, but but uh, seriously, I I uh, I had done acid one night. Um, I remember I was living in, a, in an apartment. I was 18 years old, and I was uh, I took this real visual acid. Where, I, where did you grow up? Here, North Jersey. Jersey. So I had an apartment in Elmwood Park. This when did was you the move first, here? Uh, 2009. I went to Full Sail. Oh right. Okay. I went to Orlando for a year, right. and then I moved over to the Tampa Bay area. Um, but this was like a very visual acid, and, and I had this black carpet. And I remember when I looked at the carpet. It looked like a movie theater carpet, like all swirls of color and stuff. Wow. And, and my friend who had taken the same acid was seeing the same colors, which is interesting whenever you, you do the same kind of hallucinogenic with someone and you, you're seeing the same things. But uh, Suggestive? Suggestive? Yeah, like you said, dude, I'm seeing rainbows. And he went, Oh, and yeah. then he went, uh, maybe. Or maybe yeah. it's just, uh, I don't know. I I remember this ecstasy we took one time where everybody everybody was seeing everybody wearing glasses, like thin metal frame glasses. That's crazy. And we all saw it. That's the mercury in the... It's really weird. But this night, this acid was very visual. I had that movie theater carpet thing going on. Um, I fell asleep. Uh, so You I'm, fell asleep on acid? This was later, wow. later okay, in the day. Okay. You know, I yeah. was tripping from like the early evening yeah, till, till like, to like three in the morning. morning yeah. Like three in the morning. I fell asleep, um, and I was woken up at 7 a.m. by my dad, who had was at my house, at my apartment at 7 a.m., rings the doorbell, to tell me that my brother had died. Um, Whoa. And he was 27. And he, uh, I was 18 years old. He uh, had accidentally, I mean, there's reasons why I believe it was an accident, but he had accidentally shot himself and was dead. And I uh, remember getting into the car with him and driving over to my mother's house and dealing with that scene that was obviously, uh, uh, you know, unlike anything else in my life, uh, being there all day, just trying to begin to accept that this had even happened. Um, And... You, you know, I remember just being in a, in a total daze through the whole thing. And around three o'clock in the afternoon, my dad drove me back to my apartment. And I walked in my apartment. I walked upstairs. I walked into the living room. And I looked down, and I was still seeing the movie theater colors Swirls. in my yeah in my uh, carpet. So I, I, I was, like, kind of lightly tripping on acid through that entire experience of learning this, which, uh, in retrospect... Might have helped you a lot. I'm kind of happy that it yeah. did happen like that. Yeah. Um, I know that sounds kind of crazy. I certainly had plenty of time to let it sink in o- over the coming weeks and months. Yeah. Um, but that was uh, that was how I found out about that. So now I'm, I'm 18 years old and I had lost my brother. I, I had sp- was already kind of really into the doors and a- kind of obsessing about death. And then this was death as close as possible. You know, this was my brother who died. Um, so yeah, at an early age, I really had to begin to think about my own mortality through such a close loss. And, and, you know, the, the hits kept coming, so to speak. Uh, I was dating a girl who died, who hung herself in her backyard. What? Um, and then we found out later that maybe 
that's not what happened. Um, someone might have been responsible for it. That's another whole crazy story. Um, yeah, that's crazy. And then, and I, to keep laying it on, I, just just to talk about how familiar I am with this, uh, and we're, we're going to have Felissa Rose on a bit too, who I, I know has had some tough losses in her life. We're going to talk to her about that. But uh, then my buddy Mikey, who was the best. I mean, when I moved down to Florida, I really didn't make make that many friends. I, just a couple, um, and I was waiting tables. I, I talked about him last week a little bit because AJ was here, and AJ's his cousin. Um and Mikey was just the best, and, and uh, he took what he thought was Xanax, and it was misprinted uh, as Xanax, but it was actually loaded with fentanyl, Ugh. and it killed him on the spot. And he was so, like, loved and funny, and his funeral was incredible. There were, there were hundreds of people there, and we, uh, I, I didn't expect to talk at his funeral. I, I don't think most of us did, but we all ended up talking. Just because we all had funny stories about yeah, him, because yeah, he was like yeah. the funniest dude in the world. Um, so you know, dealing with death and, and trying to find a way to accept it and to accept that loss is one of the hardest things anyone ever has to go through. But we all have to go through it at all, all different levels. I did, it's inevitable. Um, I did what's called biocene cleanup for a long time. So I we would be called to go out to crime scenes or death scenes and clean. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, I, I I saw a woman who had been stabbed seven times and shot twice by her husband. Oh my god. And she bled to death in the bathroom. So her entire body outline was on the floor in blood. Yeah. Even the strands of her hair. Like you saw her body there. Wow. And the weirdest thing is, man, uh, when we were I was cleaning uh, I had to mop it up right you gotta use a special chemical and shit to get all the blood up and all this stuff um, my partner the guy who actually owned the company was in the back room cleaning up blood back there because she had been stabbed in the bedroom ran to the living room got stabbed six more times where she bled all over everything and then she ran into the bathroom where he shot her dead twice oh man okay this is a mom who had three little kids at home they were all at home so we're cleaning up. He's in the back room. I'm in the bathroom. And we hear this wham. And I look out from the bathroom into the hallway, and he looks out from the bedroom. He's like, what was that? I said, I don't know. We walk into the kitchen, and all of the phones start ringing. All of the, uh, that's me, I think. That's you. Just, yeah, just shut hang the on up. Sorry, my bad. That's fine. Um, so... Uh, so we go into the kitchen, and every single cabinet had opened. Oh, gosh. Every cabinet door was open. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? That is. What does that mean? I don't know. I mean, that's another part of this conversation, too, about the afterlife and um, psychic mediums and ghosts. Um, everyone has different opinions. I mean, I, I know I have a good friend who is such a... a beyond a skeptic he's like just get the fuck out of here there's no yeah. fucking ghosts you fucking idiot yeah, i got one of those friends. you know yeah. <laughs> yeah but i mean until you experience something yourself whether it's something you saw or undeniably heard or an experience with a medium which i had a, a crazy one which uh, I'll, t I'll tell you guys about maybe when phyllis is on the phone but uh have you have you ever had a, an experience with a medium yeah, and it's crazy everything she told me. Yeah. I mean, I was young. I was like 18 when she told me, and shit's still happening. Yeah. Still happening. Yeah, I, I mean, there are things that are just unexplainable. Um, my mother went and saw a medium from New York named George Anderson, and she sat down uh, in a group with five other families, and she was able to audio record it. It's expensive, you know? Um, but she was able to audio record what he said, and he played it back for us. And, man, they said some crazy things on there. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Jonathan Edwards? Did you ever watch I don't know. Show? I question things when it's on TV. It's yeah. just because it's on TV. I don't know. The real you know, ones that's, aren't getting paid when, for. When you're told something in real life. I'll tell the story now because I started it. But uh, <laughs> uh, George Anderson said a lot of things. He said a lot of things to my mother that were just crazy. Uh, the, he's the apple of your eye, which really meant something to my mom. Uh, he had a brother and he had brothers. He had a sister that he was just getting very close with and an another sister. And, uh, but one of the last things he said on the tape was the craziest thing for me was undoubtedly a message to me. Uh, 
if it wasn't so bizarre, I wouldn't have been so convinced. But um, wh what the guy said is, uh, so now he's he's talking like he's talking to my brother, you know, and he says, uh, so now he's telling me George is here. And he wants me to say George is here. And there's no face to put to the name. It's not someone you know. It's not even a person. Now he's telling me to mind my own business. He just wants me to say George is here and drop it. And uh, my mother had no idea what that meant at all. Uh, but I was, like, shaking because George was our code word for pot on the phone. Is George there? Have you heard from George? Did you talk to George? Is George around? Oh, Have snap. you seen George? <laughs> and this fucking guy is telling my mother, he says, George is here, and there's no face to put to the name. It's not a guy. He's telling me to mind my own business. Just say George is here and drop it. I mean, that, that's impossible. That, that's so such what you're a saying, specific message. Is that my brother smoking weed wherever he is? No, I think but, he's trying to snitch you out, bro. I don't think. How so? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I mean, I, I, there couldn't have been a more uh, perfectly designed message for me that could have come through. Um, oh, no doubt. And it wasn't just happenstance. What, what is the fucking chances that this guy's going to say, uh, it's not a face you could put to the name. It's not a person that you know. He's telling me to mind my own business. Say, George is here and drop it. Uh, so that, to me, through everything else that I've experienced in 37 years, that, to me, is the most uh, impossible thing to understand and the most uh, intense confirmation of the possibility of something beyond this. And, and the one thing I will say it's about pretty it, wild. The one thing I'll say about an afterlife to skeptics that say that, oh, it's impossible. That's impossible. You, what, you die and then you float into some other existence? That's fucking impossible. The only thing I say to that as someone who tries to think logically is this is fucking impossible. Have you looked around? Have you seen yeah. <laughs> the life around you? Yeah, it's crazy. That is fucking impossible. It is yeah. not, you cannot comprehend, nobody could, how any of this started, how it's here. How there's 8.3 million species of, I mean, it, they just it, found a new species of shark yesterday. It, it's this is impossible. This yeah. world is impossible. Yeah. So I have a good one, I, real quick. I know yeah. you want to. I know you want to cut. Um, I went up to Alaska to make frostbite because yeah. my dad was dying. Mm -hmm. My dad was living in hospice care in the house uh, where him and my mom lived. Um, okay, that's not even what I wanted to talk about. What I want to talk about was the medium. Sorry, I'll go back to my okay. dad later on, which was creepy as fuck. Yeah. But the medium told me when I was 18 years old, before I knew anything, she told me that my father wasn't who I thought he was. Hmm. Now, I didn't know until I was 27 that I have another father. Oh, my I God. I have a biological dad who I've never met. Isn't that creepy? You didn't even know it. How I could this know person it. know right. it? Right. I know? didn't even know it. You didn't even. That's incredible. I didn't know it until I was 27, and my brother <laughs> called me, and he told me, because my mom told him because she was drunk. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I certainly understand, understand the the way that people could feel like, oh, it's fucking bullshit. There, there, there's this. That explains that, and it's that's the way it is. You, it's fucking ridiculous. I, I can understand someone feeling that until they live through something themselves, until something is directly spoken or done or observed by them that uh, leaves no other possibility to them. Uh, and yeah. and if, if it's experiences like that that feed your beliefs, um, then, the, I mean, if it gives you some form of acceptance of your impending death, if nothing else... That's a positive. It could be a life-changing thing. Um, but anyways, thanks for listening to all that. I do have more <laughs> thoughts about death. We're going to have Felissa Rose from Sleepaway Camp Yay. on in a minute. We're going to give her a call. I want to play a song for you guys. So we got a lot of chatter there on the text There's a lot. And I'm sorry, yeah. guys. I can't keep up with all that. I was just trying to... Uh, There's like stories being written. Talk. I'm going to read that one. It's out. all going to be up later, so we will read it all later. And I'm going to read that up. one out loud in like a... In a somber kind of way. Which one? When we come to the one on the bottom there. Okay. All right. So I want to play a song. Uh, at Mikey Z's funeral um, back in October of 2016. Uh, hey, what about me? What? She said Alex is a natural at this. I, oh, you are too, Joe. You're fantastic. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Joe Davison of Stranger Things. Of people. Stranger Things. Going to get us all a job. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, it's not my show, guys. <laughs> at, at Mike Easy's funeral, uh, the, the, the place was packed. You know, and, and Mikey was always so proud of his friends and his family. This is, was the most excitable guy in the world. You know, you could get a new calculator, and he'd be like, oh, man, it adds and it divides and subtracts. <laughs> this thing's amazing. High five. You know, he, he was like the most excitable uh, and proud guy. He was super proud of me so and to be my friend. And he was so proud of his family, Who you know, AJD, who was here last week, the Dina Colas, uh, his uh, mother's family um mikey's mother's family uh they're, they're all such talented musicians ajd was here last week and his father ronnie d who we spoke about is an incredible musician and mikey loved this song of his called precious times they played it at the funeral and uh i everybody was just crying their eyes out because it, it was we knew how much mikey loved this song and how much uh is that the song you're playing now so yeah i'm gonna play this song now called precious times by ronnie d and when we get back, we'll be calling Felissa Rose from Sleepaway Camp. I'm singing this from my babies. These troubled times won't last too long. So I'm gonna sing to you the sweetest song. These are precious times Precious times There's times in our lives When living gets rough So I'm gonna show you, baby How to stay tough, tough by sticking together Thank God you are mine Cause these are precious times Precious times now listen. Trouble is just trouble, baby It is what it is around you'll be humble baby it just don't get better than this <laughs> these troubled times won't last too long so I'm gonna sing to you Sweetest song to ease your mind, leave your worries behind. Cause these are precious times, precious times. Trouble times 
sleepaway camp that everybody remembers at the end with Felissa showing her dark secret. Crossing the transgender. Uh, <laughs> Felissa, are you there? I'm here. Oh, Hi. There Hi. <laughs> Let me bring this down. So great to have you on. Uh, Felissa is such a doll if you haven't met her, but she, I, you know, I was saying about you earlier, you really bring the energy to these conventions. You're, you are so... Uh, full of life and appreciative appreciative and fun with fans and, and you dress up and you look great and you put on such a big smile and you're so happy. Uh, so I'm thrilled to yeah. have you on here. Thank you so much for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks for all that love. Um, you do the same. We have a great time together. We, as I always say, we're the big family and we're like the today's circus we go from town to town right i know sometimes it feels like <laughs> it feels like we stand still and the, the world just circles around us at these things sometimes you know <laughs> it's great and then we text we're like where are you gonna be next what's you know when am i gonna see you yeah it's really nice oh it's so much it's fun a great and i know you made you've made uh good friends with my film sister oh. christina lise who is the best Jeez. One of my favorite people on the planet. I'm obsessed with her. I try to keep my fangirling to a minimum. Yeah, she's um, great. <laughs> I love her. Yeah, she's absolutely wonderful. Super smart and beautiful and everything. She's a great so, person. So I was watching that scene earlier. I haven't seen Sleepaway Camp in a long time, but I watched that oh. uh, final scene. Man, you, you I'm might, sorry. what is the number one question <laughs> that you get at these conventions? <laughs> Can you make the face? <laughs> Can you make the face? <laughs> okay. yeah. Can you make the still, dead, dead table, scary face? Really face? Yeah. Super bizarre, open mouth, eyes to the right, you know, glare. How many people um, ask you if you really work? have a dick? <laughs> oh, that's the second question. That's the second question. And muscle. I always say, would you like to see it? Would you like yeah, to see? I, and you actually had yeah, a little uh, uh, phallus strapped to you this last show, I noticed, actually. Oh, my God. That was my favorite. <laughs> That's fantastic. Apparently, they made some mask. A company made a mask. And along with the mask, it's like a cereal box. You get a little secret, something special in the box. And it's a strap-on penis. Perfect. And <laughs> someone brought it to my table. Of course, just as Greg Nicotero walks by, you know, the creator of The Walking Dead, <laughs> I have this strap-on on, and I'm like, Greg, Greg, and he's like, hey, and I'm like, look, and I'm pointing down, and he's like, oh, my God, 
I am. You are always the life of the party at these things. You know, uh, I I remember back to being in Calgary and you uh, drunkenly singing uh, Like a Virgin karaoke and dancing with Sean Whalen. (laughs) You are always 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 a fun time, Felissa. Isn't it, though? That's how we, you know, that's what's so great about the weekend. It's like... It's an experience, I think, for everyone. And we, I mean, we've all made such wonderful friends, like people who come to the table. I'm still in touch with so many people. Oh, of course. Um, brilliant. And then when you when yeah. you do these shows again, too, when you come back to a city that you were at the last two mm-hmm. years and you see all the same faces of fans that were happy to meet you that time and they tell you about their stories. And, of course, you know, we don't remember them, but they remember us very well. <laughs> I remember faces, uh, but uh, names are, are the hardest, you know. Sometimes I forget. So what do we do when we when we're not uh, quite sure of the names? <laughs> yeah, you say, uh, "How do you spell that again? Uh, how do you spell it? Uh, it's Joe." We're like Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> like, oh, is that oh Jen. You know, some people spell it with a G. I just I got asked. You know, it's our way of getting through with the fact that we totally forgot what they just told us ten seconds ago. I had that experience with John, John Wesley Ship. John Wesley Ship, the Flash from Flash in New Mexico. Talked to him for two hours, came back a little while later, and he wanted to give me a picture. And he's like, "Oh man, what was your what name was again?" Your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, "What are you gonna do? You meet, you meet, you know, t- yeah. two two thousand people in a weekend. It's, it's impossible. Uh, How many do you meet? Are you we, meet a lot. Like we, I've worked with actors who can't remember. Like there are a couple of famous actors, and I've worked with them numerous times. Yeah." And each time I get to the set, I'm like, and oh, I shit. pretty much at this point know they can't remember me. And I'm like, hey, I'm Felissa. <laughs> <laughs> the first couple of times they were like, yeah. hey, nice to meet you. I'm like, yeah, I was your love interest in the other film. It, Can I borrow the call sheet and narrow it down if I could? So when we were talking this weekend, Felissa, about uh, different topics that, that we would discuss on the show this week, um, Mm-hmm. We both decided that death would be, would be a good one to discuss. I know you've had a lot of loss in your life. Also. It's so joyful. We figured this would be the best route. <laughs> yeah, you know, us horror people, yeah, we're no. so we're so I light and fluffy job. that. Yeah. I, now, have you had any um, psychic medium experiences? Oh my gosh, that's my favorite thing to do. Whenever I get the opportunity and I meet someone. Sometimes people will say, oh, my cousin's psychic, whatever. I always get the number. Yes. There was a time when I was going regularly. I had a medium friend. Her name is Mary in New York. And I I, I think I told you this, but we were drunk. Um, in uh, the bar last weekend, I was telling you how I was engaged to um, an actor named Trevor Goddard. And he sadly uh, passed away. Um, from a drug overdose, and I did come back to our house after begging and pleading that he quit, get help, all that stuff, and he promised. I stayed away, and then I came home, and he was unfortunately he had passed away in our in our in our bedroom. So, mm. um, needless to say, life changed dramatically for me. Um, very quickly did I learn nothing is to be taken seriously on this journey. Yeah. Um, and that's why I try to bring a lot of levity and positivity because it so easily can be taken away. But with that, I, I found Mary, and it was at that time that I really decided I love mediums, and I love the idea of where do we go? What is the energy? You know, it's like I don't – I mean, my belief system is we are still an extension, although the physical body, you know, goes away. We are still long – you know, I do believe it too. I mean, I mean, my encounters with mediums have left me no choice but to believe that there is more uh, than just this. Besides the fact that it just seems too fucking cruel for this to be it. You know, just, yeah, I, I, I mean, shot. you give us yeah, this consciousness that that is able to form bonds with people and uh, be so aware of ourselves, and and once we finally learn to really know and understand ourselves we die and that's the end of it i mean it's entirely possible uh and we don't know we don't know we'll the entire out. process is pretty cruel yeah well it's true it's, it's true i mean the, the irony of, of life is you know we're given this incredible impossible experience with the knowledge that it's all going to end you know i mean that it's uh 
kind of a mean a mean trick. A well, little the bit beginning to, is weird you know. too, man, because you're shot out into from a you're just in you got to yes yeah. you start as gross. nothing. It's yeah. all gross, and you don't know anything. You can't you begin and end the same way. Yeah, yeah you don't know you nothing. Do. I don't know you're anything. Like, if you're lucky, you can't eat, yeah. you can't talk, you yeah. can't yeah. eat and poop yourself. You know, yeah. it's like all of the things. If you see the cycle of life. And it, and it's, and I mean, there's so many things. I remember being seven years old and sitting in my bed thinking, I know, I remember something having been part of my extension of this life that we call it, um, greater than the physical. I knew it. I was like, I just feel it. It's just, like you said, it's just too cruel or too crazy for it to just be this physical. Um, I also listen a lot to Abraham Hicks. I don't know if, if you've ever heard of Abraham Hicks. Abraham is like a sort of, I mean, sort of like the universe or an extension of um, something greater than the physical out there that right. speaks through a, a woman named Esther. And it's fantastic because all it really says is you're supposed to live joyfully and happily and that's it. And like, who gives a fuck about anything else? Yeah. Don't ha- have zero resistance in this lifetime and you will be joyful because you will not worry or have anxiety or deal yeah. and we create and manifest everything. Take and I believe comes, that. Man. Absolutely. I agree yeah. I agree entirely. I mean, you know, the 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 meaning of life, the un- unanswerable question of the meaning of life, somewhere in the real answer of that if there is one lies the ability to just be happy and just try to find happiness and joy where you can. Granted, that is much more difficult for some than others. Um, some, mm-hmm. you know, start with certain privileges and others start with certain challenges. But, uh, you, you know, the, the secret I mean, to it is accepting what about life you love and what you find beautiful in it. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's like comparing you to Elijah Wood. Fuck Elijah Wood, man. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. Felissa, I, I really want to thank you yeah. for coming on. You you are the best. A- yeah. And anyone who ever goes to a convention or sees that Felissa's at a convention, you. you just got to go say hello to Aww. her. She's always wearing thank a sexy you. dress. Yeah, and she's always got a big smile. <laughs> Felissa, you sound very lovely. Yeah, yeah she is. She's, she is a doll. Do it, right? Felissa, let's play thank a game you. real quick. I played this with Chris- okay. I played this with Christine last what? week. I'm going to ask you the same questions I asked her because oh God, you, you guys it. are our friends and this these are a bunch of have you questions have you ever done this or that okay okay, okay. have you ever uh, have you ever shoplifted yes when i was like uh 12 have you ever had a one night stand no have you ever made a have you, <laughs> oh, all I these women that. say no every woman is I, no. I believe it though you know i believe funny? it i I kind of always wanted to but i it was like i'm in a relationship what's your person, you and you're a relationship person yeah yeah, she is. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, I love long relationships. Have okay. you ever made a sex tape? Well, no. Another but thing like you got to check off someday. I, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> have On you, my bucket list. Have you ever lied to get a job or a gig? I'm sure I have. Yeah, yeah of Who course. Hasn't? Like you sure. fucking so walk remember. a tightrope with fire. I'm yeah. like, of course I do. <laughs> have you Have you ever killed an animal besides a bug? Oh my God, no! And I never will, and I'll kill somebody who does that. <laughs> Have you ever faked an orgasm? Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have, you... Have you ever been arrested? No. Mm-mm. Have you ever lied about your age? No, I'm proud of it. Totally own that. Well, I don't know your age, but you look That's gorgeous no there. matter what your age is. <laughs> I'll be fifty on May twenty third. Oh my gosh! Never happy birthday! Happy birthday. Yeah. We'll have to call her on her birthday. <laughs> have you ever dined and dashed? No. Mm-mm. Have you ever had an unhealthy obsession with someone? Mm, yeah, I'm sure. Probably. <laughs> Definitely in my younger days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's, and, hence the no one night stand because <laughs> I would just stay and it, make them want me. <laughs> have you ever been on a dating app? Nope, never. Not my generation, man. Okay. Um, I'm you... so fucking boring. Nope. <laughs> have, you, uh, have you ever caught an ex cheating? Uh, yeah. In college, yeah. Have you ever peed your pants as an adult? <laughs> yes, I have. Making, <laughs> playing 
a character in a movie. <laughs> on set? screaming so loud. On set, I played a huge woman. She's 250 pounds. And they had me in the fat suit. And I had to run out of the car and scream this, like, real crazy shit. And I guess just from the fat suit and the screaming and the being hot in the suit, yeah, I fucking peed. I was like, can somebody pull me off set right now? Because I just fucking peed myself. Oh, man. Where yeah. are the outtakes? <laughs> it, was, it was awful. And they had an outhouse because we were so we were in the middle of nowhere. It was so shitty. Yeah, crazy. have you have you ever stolen an idea and claimed it as your own? No, mm-mm, never. Doesn't, would do doesn't that. sound like you at all. That's that's shitty. And the last question, which really was kind of tailor made for Christine as a vegan, but have you ever cleaned a fish? You know, I come from a very Italian family, and we do have like the seven fishes on Christmas Ah, so do Eve, I. So- I have the seven fishes on yeah. on Christmas Eve. Also, what is this? It's the seven. It's the seven yeah. fishes. It's an Italian thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Seven yeah. different types of fish on Christmas Eve. Yeah, is it like crazy. having to do with like a uh, Jewish thing at all, or I guess maybe. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, my family's everything, but that my what family. What are the seven fishes? Fish. What do you eat? Sure. Uh, it's up to you. Any any seven fish you could do. Yeah, anything. Oysters, any clams, calamari. shrimp, fish calamari, fish. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's shellfish counts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. isn't it? Isn't yeah. it octopus? Yeah, octopus is good too. <laughs> Melissa, I think we have. A, I, th- I think we have a call for you. I think we have a caller. I think we have our first caller. Uh, ooh, let's let's, ooh. let's see. Let me try. This could be my first one night stand. Are you on okay. there? Oh, nice. Do we have a caller on? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Who's this? I can't hear. It's Kellen. Oh, hey, oh, Kellen. Kellen. What's Kellen. going on, man? Do you have a question for Felissa? I do, man. Go ahead, uh, man. Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, how did you like going to school with Adam Sandler? Uh, uh, Kellen wants to know how you liked going to school with Adam Sandler. Oh, my God. I loved going to school with him. He was one of the nicest, most generous people. His, uh, we were in the same dorm. I was a freshman. He was a senior. He was actually dating my cousin. And um, I used what? to hang out in his room with yeah, he was so cool, and he would we'd smoke, and he'd play guitar, and Tim Hurley um, was his roommate, so I oh, think wow. he's still his partner. Um, yeah, and it wasn't, I, I just, you know, it was a brief hangout, you know, we even did like a little thing on MTV when it first started um, for a TV series, but then I saw him many years later on the street, and he had just really risen to fame, and I started screaming, ah! <laughs> and I said, it's fun now. And he was like, oh, how are you doing? Super cool, really down-to-earth guy. Oh, that's awesome. So, Did you see his new yeah, stand-up special that. thing on Netflix? I have not, but it's so weird. I was just watching one of his films yesterday. I forget which one. Um, with, with Jennifer Aniston and Brooklyn Decker. Oh, it's re- it it's so really cute. it's really good. It, it's really funny. I mean, if you're a fan I of his know, old CDs name. and I love everything about him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the call, <laughs> Kellen. I that was the question. Thank you for the oh, yeah, man. Appreciate it, bud. All right. Well, thank you, Felissa. I really appreciate you having on. Thank you. I love you. Thanks Any, so much. Anyone who wants to see more about Felissa, go to her website, felissarose.com. Oh, hold on. Uh, Mike, Mikey, Mike, uh, Mikey's got a question for you. Hello, Felissa. Who do you like more, Elijah Wood or Alex? (laughs) (laughs) Without a doubt, hands down. Don't even have to think about it. I love my Alex. Oh, thank you, Felissa. I love you, too. Greatest, sweetest. I really, really do, though. I know people are always like, oh, I love you, I love you. But I mean it from my heart. I I love you, and I get so excited when I see that we're at the same convention. The feeling's mutual. It's always a blast. Thank, thank, you, thank you. He so would have made a great thanks Hobbit. Yeah, it would have been great. Yeah, oh, thanks, my, guys. My pleasure. Thanks for being on, uh, and I'll talk have to you soon. Time. We love you. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. If you guys want to see more about Felissa, you could go to her website, FelissaRose.com. She is on Twitter, uh, Felissa underscore Rose, and Instagram, FelissaRose123. If she's got some pictures up there, definitely go check out her Instagram. What are we doing? Uh, we're done with that. Okay. We don't need that. All right, guys, uh, we're going to take a break. I'm going to play a song for you. And then Denny Dwyer, who is a super talented singer songwriter, I've been working with him in the studio over the last year on a 16 track record, uh, or maybe a 12 track and then another B side. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to talk about his release and his music and his career coming up 
first I'm going to play a song for you guys by The Resonance. We recorded this at my studio a couple weeks ago. This song's called Runaway. And... Hi, this is Doug Bradley, Pinhead from the Hellraiser Films, and you are listening to the Final Note Podcast with Alex Vincent. And you'd better keep listening or I will tear your soul apart. All right, we're back. Oh, that was a little... Well, anyways, welcome back. Uh, thanks, uh, Denny. Uh, in the studio right now is Denny Dwyer, who is a super talented songwriter. We've been working together for, what, the past it's been a year, six months? I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, off and on we work. We work about once a week. We have recorded uh, sixteen songs. We brought in a bunch of really great musicians. He had the opportunity to work with AJ, who was our guest last oh, week. Oh God, he's amazing! Isn't he? Absolutely. He's, he's such God. a good kid and, yeah. and a talented guy. Yeah. Um, but your music, you know, I I really uh, connect with it. it. It comes from a time, an era of music. Your influences that are similar to mine, uh, which is probably why we work so well together. But um, when did you start playing music? When did music first come into your life? Oh, it's funny because people always say, and I, I've said that in my life to people, if, if you've got the musical ability, where did it come from? You know, mom or dad or whatever. And and the only the experience I had, my father, this is this this dates me. Back in the day, my dad would put me in the 62 Mercury Monterey, and we'd drive around Port Huron, Michigan, where I was born and raised, and go pay the bills. Yeah. You know, you go pay the electric bill, and you go pay the gas bill or whatever. And in the car, he'd sing all the time. And he'd sing Bing Crosby and Dean Martin and all this stuff, and he'd get into it. And But I didn't always ask him for a song in front of people. And he said, no, I, I, no don't get, that's crazy. Yeah. So I think that planted the seed. Did I, he I, write songs as well, or he would just sing? No, no. In fact, he worked at a music store, 
uh, though, for a while. And I asked him at one time, too, did he ever play an instrument? He said only enough to show it. So like a piano, oh, okay. he could play a little thing on the piano, sure. a little thing on the guitar just to, to show the instrument. So there's all those influences, I guess, somehow. Um, but mainly I got to, you know, I got my teenage years. Everybody, if you're into music, you want to play something. I wanted to be a keyboard player at one time, and I realized – Taking a keyboard to the beach and hanging out with the gang is yeah, not going to work. Yeah, that's not as easy, right? Yeah. So I'm kind of, <laughs> yeah, no, not working. But then I saw, I don't remember who first, maybe Glenn Campbell, maybe John Denver, uh, maybe Neil Diamond. One of those guys, I saw him with a guitar and thought, how cool is that? Yeah, I mean, sure. that's just, it's portable. It's, you can accompany yourself, you know, the better you get at it, you can even better accompany us. Somebody like AJ who can sing great and yeah. play great is an amazing double threat. But Now, uh, was this in so high school that you, that you started? This would be in high school, yeah. In fact, I took guitar lessons for about, oh, God, maybe maybe six months. I'm a bit of an overachiever. I went the first time. We rented a guitar. Went to the first lesson, and if anybody's listening has ever seen guitar lessons, there's a Mel Bay guitar book that you can learn from, and it's page by page. It's like a lesson plan thing in a school. And I go in the first day, and the guy says, okay, here's there's you know six strings, obviously, on the guitar. First string, here's your exercise. Just learn to play these things and come back next week. And we'll, yeah. I get home, and I'm going, okay, I'm do the math here. This is going to take me six <laughs> weeks just to learn <laughs> our take notes. A lifetime. I want to yeah, yeah, play yeah. and sing. So I sure. went, and I just locked myself in my room, and all week I learned all the things. So I went back next week, said, here's first string. He said, that's good. Well, let's go to second string. No, no, here's second string. Here's third string. Here's fourth string. Yeah. And he said, holy cow now what i said well i want to learn chords i want to learn to play and sing yeah so so that was all i was about 15 and i would not play outside of my bedroom until i was probably 17 so now you were balancing this with sports because you were playing a lot of baseball at this time right yeah huge huge part of my life i've I've been a player and a coach most of my life yeah and i I love baseball i mean one of the Uh, things that that uh took me away from acting when i was 13 was uh, my inability to play baseball with my friends. You know, I, I wanted oh, to, yeah. I, was, I was going auditioning three or four times a week in New York city. I did, wasn't able to play. So I missed some of those fundamental years, which is probably that, why yeah. I ended yeah. up sucking so bad oh. when I did start <laughs> playing oh. baseball at 13. But, uh, I did a lot. I mean, when I was a coach at the high school level, I used to honk the horn and I'd be driving down the street and I'd see kids out playing catch. Yeah. You could that's you coached baseball in gone. high school too. Yeah, which I coached, is, uh, actually I, I have a, I ran the table. I've coached everything from eight year olds to 21 year olds with, oh, with wow. no break, everything right up the line. And, and uh, watched all the different levels, and, and uh, really loved coaching high school. High yeah. school was was my was my niche. Yeah. I uh, I umpired a season in North Jersey. Oh I, God, I got love my, you! I got oh, my, yeah, I got my uh, <laughs> you know whatever certificate you need or whatever. I went through the class. Too nice a guy though. You couldn't do it, right? I hated it. I, I fucking <laughs> hated it. It was terrible. Absolutely. It was terrible. I oh. I, uh, I co I you know I, I did kids and stuff. The kids was fun, uh, but but I I would I would umpire like these firemen softball leagues and these guys you know i i I punched one out looking Uh, i (laughs) swear to god it was a strike what do you want me to do you didn't swing they wanted to kill me they wanted to kill me i I remember it was uh, you know in like the fall and in chile and i had a jacket there and and oh and then later i punched out a guy at third on against the same team And these guys were flipping out. I, mean, I might have blown the call. I don't know. But, uh, but, you know, you can't get them all. That's right. But, but I, I, I drove Saints. away. I drove away. <laughs> and they were, like, swarming behind me. Oh, my and God. I see in the rear view my jacket over the, over the field there, like oh. over the ben- benches as I'm driving away. I was like, well, goodbye. That's see right. ya. That's it for that jacket. <laughs> Go buy a new Not jacket. going back there. I uh, I umpired once in college, and a guy, one of my my coach, asked me to do it. I needed some extra money, so I went and and I did a doubleheader. In the first game of the doubleheader, I was out in the bases because I didn't know. Second game though, I'm I'm behind the plate, and the guy that's umping with me is a pro, so he's got the undershirt gear and stuff. Yeah. So he lets me use his gear. I put this on, I come out looking like Frankenstein, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'm just. So bottom line to the game, it went pretty well because I was a pitcher. So right. behind so the you, plate, you I know loved the it. Zone I, well. I was yeah, good with sure. it. If anything, I was probably generous to the pitchers. Yeah. But I remember a, a play at the plate, and I learned from other umpires. There used to be the trick that said, "Was well, a bang bang play, and you don't know what to do." You'd say, "Show me the ball." Yeah. Well, this was a bang bang play at the plate, and I'm going show me the ball, which obviously means. If if you show me the ball, he has to be out. I've right. already made the right. decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I bought myself five seconds. Guy shows me the ball, and he's out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and they all I thought, know. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I probably blew that one too. But yeah. I, you you, you know. get some, sometimes you make a great call, sometimes you make a terrible call. A buddy call. of mine told me a long Just time ago. Just ask the Saints. If people you, miss if calls. If you get run out of town, get out in front and make it look like a parade. Exactly. And I remember that as an umpire. Exactly. I just made it look like I knew what I was doing. And, and like you say, make a quick exit. Yep. Leave the jacket. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Don't go back for it. That's a good good story. Yeah. Now, now bringing it back to your music, uh, okay. you know, I, I, I find you to be, first of all, a very talented uh, guitar oh. player. But, but you're a an There's excellent. cash there on the. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're an excellent songwriter, um, oh, and and these songs that you write. Uh, you're really great at arranging. You know, we've built these songs. They started as just acoustic vocals, and, and you're going to play a stripped down version of a song tonight. Right. Um, but we've really embellished these songs over the past several months working together. We well, the flip side, let musicians. me tell you, it's great working with you here in the oh, studio you. because of those influences. But but you you're honest enough to tell me when something's not right, but yet you're supportive enough to not just crush me. Absolutely, that's great. Absolutely, no. I mean, I I really have very little to produce with you because you do you do have a really good idea of where you want these songs to go and and where they want. And, and and now when when this comes to fruition finally are you're you planning some sort of CD release party. Hoping to there, there's a boys a little town in Michigan just north of us called Lexington. It reminds me of Dunedin here that I live where I live now, and uh, they've got a little theater um, sits three hundred four hundred people maybe tops. Yeah, and uh, it's a great little setup, a nice little intimate place, and I'm hoping to do something there. I think that's because I play in that town a lot. It's amazing. That town, for some reason, gets me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my sure. hometown doesn't necessarily get me as much. As I mean, <laughs> I, I play there, but and it goes yeah, well. A but they by the yeah. They don't book me as much. So yeah. this Lexington seems to like it. So I'm I'm thinking of doing something like that, and and probably hiring a band of my buddies that are that are we played with together forever. And awesome. It's exciting. It's scary. Well, we're, we're going scary. to we're going to mix on this project here coming up. We've done yeah. a lot of recording. I have a little more saxophone. Ronnie D, it, oh, who I played earlier today. What a He's, good guy. Yeah, uh, both. Of them are just great, but yeah, Ronnie's going to come in next Wednesday and, and finish up the uh, saxophone on this record. The song that you're going to play tonight is a song that we did in the first round uh, right. back last year. Right. It's called Man in the Top Row. Can you tell right. us about that song? <clears throat> well, it's interesting because I was listening to your previous guests and I was fascinated by the conversation. I mean, the, the whole the whole theme is topic is just uh, something that you can talk about forever. And you sure. got, as the, I think you said, you got to figure out your own way to do it. In this case, it's a story about my father, who was, as many guys can say, my best friend. He was my baseball coach as growing up. He was, he was my boss. He hired me for a while. He, uh, I spent so much time with him and really wanted to be like him. And the best compliment I get to this day is somebody says, you remind me of your dad. And I just kind of go, oh, you yeah. could have said anything. That's the one. that. So, therefore, he was the guy. And uh, when I was 23, he was killed in a car accident. Oh, this man. song was my, my way of, of doing the therapy, doing the grief. Absolutely. Um, it's really specifically autobiographical. I mean, there's there's a line in there where I talk about walking on an empty baseball field. There's a baseball field down the road for me that I used to play on all the time in some of my heydays. I had some great times there and really successful times. My dad was always there in the top row of the stands. I oh, always yeah. knew where he was going to sit. So there's so much of it that's literal. But the, the funny thing about the song, I guess I wanted to tell you this because of, of the topic. And to me, this is really bizarre and people think i make it up and there's absolutely not i couldn't yeah. make it up um since i was eight years old my dad supported my dream of playing professional baseball and always was right there with me and always you know helped me get back up one more time and i'd fall down and do poorly or whatever and he always talked to me a car stuff so he was as much a part of that career as i was so i'm 23 years old i've gone through some tryout camps at 23 you're pretty much over the hill uh, I think I heard your previous guest when you were talking about, did you ever lie about your age? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I lied about my age. I had to remember what year I was born yeah. because I didn't want to be 23 or they'd walk away from me. You know, scouts yeah. always 21. That's pretty much Sure, it. that was the cutoff, yeah. So I'm playing in a field near Detroit, Michigan, near my hometown. And there's a scout from the Detroit Tigers, my hometown team. God, would that have been amazing? He's in the stands watching me. And it's an unwritten rule that he's in the stands watching the game. If he leaves... Before the game's over with, not interested. If he stays, he's going to talk to you. Now we get. Now we're going to give me a shot. And I always wanted a shot. I was very modest and, and very humble, but I always said, "You give me a baseball, I'll get out whoever. I'll, you put Mickey Mantle up there, I get him out." 
And so I, inside I felt that way. But So I have all this stuff going on, and, and I'm pitching the game, but I'm also kind of got one eye on the stands, like hoping this guy doesn't leave. Yeah. Well, he gets up and leaves in, in the ninth inning before the game's over. So right away, phew, crushed. Yeah. Get in the car, about an hour drive home to Port Huron. All the way on the home to Port Huron, I'm feeling – Really sorry for myself. I'm doing a great job of, oh, God, I worked so hard. I've been all these years. So I'm really doing a great job. I get home to pick up my wife and my niece, who at that time was only, God, four or five years old. And as they say out of the mouths of babes, she meets me at the car. It says, Uncle Denny Papa got hurt. And then she called my father. And right then, I just Papa got hurt. I mean, it could have been anything, but it just... Bam! Just oh, hit me man. like this is not good. Yeah, and found out that he got killed in a car accident, almost the same time as that scout left that game. Oh my god! And and the irony of that, the the you know the juxtaposition of those two things happening, that to this day still gives me goof, goosebumps, and yeah, I wonder I how that worked. You know, yeah. and, and um, so I never really got the chance to tell him that it's all over, but yeah. it didn't matter at that point so so in the song like i talked about there was a time that was my my place i walked out in the on the baseball field and just kind of trying to deal with all this stuff after dealing with everybody you know with the the uh the the, the funeral and this the viewings and all that stuff uh it was my way to do it so every time i do this song it's just another way of saying you know hang in there dad i'll get there well, I'm so thankful that you're coming on to do it here today because oh, I, I love the song and I, I think it's just such a great songwriter. And to hear you tell that story just makes the song mean that much more. Um, we're going to play that song live. I want to play a song that we worked together on last year uh, called Marcus Tanner. I'm going to play that out as you go in the live room and we get set up for your song tonight. Man in the Top Row is coming up. But first, I'm going to play Marcus Tanner. Too much to ask 
hides his hurt and fear behind a smiling mask. Hey, world, I'm not a number. My mom gave me a name. Crying out to someone here, me please. No, there must be something. Someday I'm sure it'll all come clear to me Ain't somebody in need for that special someone now Holds his head, bows his head, makes this solemn vow Another morning is Town like ours, a boy walks into school. Hopes and dreams like everybody else. Blends into a crowded on a prayer someday to hear. Someone special, I'm sure glad you're here. Most is just another kid. second i think those headphones got kicked out all right denny yes sir all right we're gonna play his song now this is called man in the top row go ahead take it away good luck buddy the painted picture of a man named bill sky of blue like clouds of field world of life is good People are great. A young and vibrant, handsome man grew older, but please understand. The sparkle in his eyes never dim. Coach, a fan, a boss who cared. He was tough, but always fair. He was always there, he still never did. I broke the man who made me. He helped me when I'd be feeling down. A smile, he turned my life around. The man in the top row, the man who saved me from my self doubts and modest way. More successful, happy. I walk this empty baseball field For time my childhood memories seem I look the time I've grown is there Never told me what to do. You let me fall and help me through. You really listened to what I had to say. Now I have children of my own. The ways and words are all my own. Some I think. It's up to you, my son, 
once my job is done Good luck in the top row The man who made me, he helped me when I'd be feeling down. With a smile, he turned my life around. The man in the top row, the man who saved me from my self doubts and modest ways. A more successful, happy day. Beautiful. Oh, great job. Oh, thanks. Love that song. Thank you so much for performing it here hey, tonight, it's a, Danny. It's a pleasure to do it. Thank you. Oh, thanks for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. Danny, do you have a, a email for booking? Anyone can Well, an email, you? Uh, yeah, just like my name, d.dwyer at comcast.net. i uh, got a Facebook page at Danny Dwyer Musician. Awesome. Sometimes just open the door and yell. I'll be yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, man. All right, guys. Well, that was our that was beautiful. I'm so happy to have him here. Hold on, Mike. Uh, Joe, let me put your mic back on. There you go. You're back. Hello. Well, I was talking for like ten minutes there. Nobody heard a word. No, you did. <laughs> Tuned you right out. <laughs> like at home. He's excellent. Yeah, yeah he's, he's good. He's man. fantastic. Uh, this record that we're working John on, John Denver. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm among so many others. Yeah. You know, a lot of influences Amazing. of really great music. Uh, this record we're working on, the mix is going to be uh, quite an endeavor, but uh, the record's going to sound real good. When He's got done. a lot of chatter over there, too. People are yeah, liking cool. it. Yeah, cool. People are digging it. Yeah. Good. Well, uh, yeah, he's got about 16 songs that, that I'll be releasing. But that song, Man on the Top Row. Now, guys, by the way, the audio, mm, I know it's not perfect. I, I'm trying to figure out, like last week, uh, I. I wasn't really pushing everything hard enough. I needed to, like I said, that boring tech talk of adding a limiter and a uh, mastering software. It was really designed for spoken word. And then when I put the music in there, I know I'm going to have to toy with it a little bit. But I'm going to play that song, uh, our, outside record, of being, our recorded version of that song. Outside of being charming and good looking, Alex is also very talented and technical. I try. I try yeah. at times. It's better than Elijah best. Wood. Yeah. Oh, He's not, not even that, that short. It's like, I don't I'm, understand. What's I'm the pretty big deal? short. I'm pretty short. Uh, but, yeah, so thank you guys for being here today. Mikey, I appreciate you being here. And Mikey. Filming. And uh, Joe, of course, happy to have you yeah, back. thank you. Um, I'm, I enjoy it, sir. Yeah. I hope the fans like it. I, I hope so, you too. You know, I'm a, I'm a little baby compared to the veteran of your caliber, sir. I, years. I of, don't know, man. Like, years of it, though. You're like, you know, you're like in Galaxy Quest. In Galaxy yeah, Quest. Yeah, you're, you're trail. You got a bunch of magnetic minds trailing behind you as a career. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, you come in hard. Well, you know what I mean? I, I doing yeah. what I can. You know. <laughs> so I mean, like, that's I'm no, I'm a newbie. I'm Good. a newbie. Mikey, you got something you wanted to ask? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, there's a ton of a ton, a ton, a ton of, of things of that we could be talking well, about. Well, Mikey's going to be back, uh, maybe not next week, but a week from now, and and we'll be able to talk about oh, a lot more than two. Are we um, wrapping the show up? This guy just said he had know. sex to Danny's song while it was playing. I don't have any other song. Oh yeah, me and my girl made love to Danny's track. Yeah, score. Mm. I mean, we're not going to hurt Elijah Wood, Kellen. Uh, you know, fuck him, but I, I'm not going to hurt him. Fuck him. I mean, Alex might not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think we'll pretty much wrap it up for for today. I think we uh, covered a, a good amount. Um, Days of the Dead was fun. I, I got to meet a couple other wrestlers while I was there, too. I met I Scott Hall. I, for play, the I heard your best friends with Scott Hall now. It, Scott Hall was fun to hang with. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Oya, me, Chico. Mm -hmm. Listen oh yeah, man. fuck Elijah me. Wood, man. <laughs> is he Australian? I am the bad guy. Was that that's not Australian? Who is that? You're but doing? that was Razor Ramon. That yeah. was his other character. Oh, I don't know who any of these people basically. are. Yeah, yeah. I don't watch. Who wrestling. was the other wrestler I met this weekend? I know uh, Junkyard uh, Dog. Oh, uh, Chris Jericho. I love I Chris Jericho. Too. He was awesome. He was awesome. <laughs> who was he before? Break the walls down. Oh, I don't know, man. I've met Chris a couple times. Yeah. What about yeah, the Scorpion? He lives in Tampa. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Over in Tampa. Scorpion. Yeah. Sting? I don't know. 
Sting was my favorite. One guy was real colorful, and then the other dude looked like the crow. Yeah, that's Sting. It's the same guy. He started off super colorful as the Stinger. Uh, You know, that was one of the times that I really got dragged back into wrestling. Yeah, he, and then he, he had to come back and right the wrongs of the NWO. Yeah, was, fuck yeah, yeah man. it was awesome. It was Scott a, Hall's fault too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, there. he came down from the rafters and knocked them all out with a baseball bat. It was great. I mean, the Crow. I was always such a massive fan of the Crow. Oh man, uh, are we so, talking about Brandon Lee now? I loved Brandon Lee yeah. so much in that movie, dude. And, you know, if I mean, he don't forget your lived. friend Eddie Furlong was also. It played the Crow the, also. Yeah. That's right. In three. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I remember like, there was uh, a further back than three. there was an idea at one him point Effie. years ago, uh, and it, I, it was going to be called like the Crow twenty thirty seven or something. And there was a picture of Trent Reznor in the Crow makeup. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been like my dream come well, true. Well, Momoa's playing him. <laughs> Project really? Jason Crow? Momoa is going to be the Crow. He's too yeah. big. Is He's that way too big? Is that he could be the now? Condor? <laughs> I've yeah, heard about yeah, that for is. like a couple that of years. A, that now. is a big bird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's got a twelve foot wingspan, man. Seriously. I don't know well, we are gonna be back next week, and uh my guest next week is going to be uh Leatherface's grandpa, John Dugan, who anyone who's met John at a convention, he is just a barrel of fun. Uh he's had he's had a really hard time recently, though he had jaw cancer that he was going through. Um and I don't think he's done any interviews since, but he and I are good friends, so I'm going to be happy to have him on. And the band that I played earlier, The Resonance, as of now, they are going to be our musical guests next week. So I have to get my shit together with this audio business, because that's a full band with uh, drums and vocals and everything. So uh, that'll be next week. I'm not exactly sure what the topic is. Um, it was a little cathartic to talk about uh, death so much tonight and to share some of my stories that oh man, I some people don't into, know. Like some of the shit I wanted to talk about. Yeah, Dude, there's a lot, man. With that bio scene cleanup stuff, and then my dad dying. You know, I I went and made that movie up in Alaska. And yeah, yeah, that story. Go ahead. Tell yeah. Me, tell us so yeah, yeah so uh, I find out my dad, my my step dad, right? Because now I know, you know, um, is dying. So I go up to Alaska to make this movie Frostbite because I was like, well, I'm not going up there unless I make a movie. Which you did everything on with sound and mixing. Thank yep. you very much. I did. Was that was a, that was a hell of a job. He oh, gave, he gave me an Shit. hour and a half long movie <laughs> and audio that was not in sync with any of it. And we're talking gun fighting scenes <laughs> and like I had to move the audio oh, of man. everything. I didn't know ADR of everything. Every sound effect. I was a had mere to put child. It all in place. Yeah, I did the best I could with it. Yeah, thank you. It was amazing. Yeah, but my dad. I was staying at my, my parents' house, and he was in hospice living in the house. So he was in a medical bed. You know, he couldn't do anything. I had to wipe his ass and everything. So one morning, like 7, he's dead. Okay, I'm making coffee. I realize the machine's not on. He's dead. So we're like, oh, shit. Okay, now we got to handle this. So within, like, by noon, everyone had been to the house. Hospice been to the house. The coroner been. The funeral home came and picked up my father. The police had come in and made a report. And then uh, hospice came in and took the bed out. So within, like, a few hours, he's gone, man. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. No more. Just out. Everything's gone. All the machines, it's all gone. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, so that night, I'm laying in the guest bedroom sleeping. And I swear to the end of my days that he was standing in the corner of the room and reached out to me. You saw him? I saw him. Wow. Plain as day, man. Plain as day. Younger, but him. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, man. And he reached out from the corner, and I fucking snapped. I just snapped out of You were half asleep at this point? Dude, or? I don't even know, but I, 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 I rolled over because I had heard a noise. Yeah. I was you know, sleeping my back towards the door, and he was in the corner of the room. So I heard a noise, I turned, I looked, and he was standing there. He reached out. I fucking leapt. I didn't even touch the floor, I don't think. I leapt from the bed to the hallway out of the room, and I was oh, like, shit. okay, I'm, you know. I was like, that was my fucking dad. Yeah. I walk out in the living room, my brother's sitting in the in the chair, and he's like, what the hell's wrong with you? And I said, uh, I, said I just saw dad. And he's like, you couldn't have, because I just saw him. Oh, my gosh. That's fucking yeah. wild, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you know, like I said, until you experience something like that, you can't 
even really wrap your head head around it. And then once you do, you'll never, ever forget it. No, I'll never forget that image of him standing there and reaching out. I I didn't know if to attack or, like, he was scared. I don't know. You know? Wow. So... Yeah, that's 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 amazing. I mean, there's uh, there's no doubt in my mind that there is more uh, to this world than what meets the eye, and more th- more than what we experience here. It just seems too too many people do have stories like that. I, and I know that we have chemicals in our brains that are capable of um, causing uh, hallucinations and, and mental images and stuff but when you when you add that DMT, in with right dmt dmt when, you, when you're about to die it sure. like releases uh, a, a whole shitload of it yeah as they say yeah i it's, think it's, it's a little more fun to have the option to play with yeah like thinking about it that way yeah like as far as skeptics go um it you know how many of them are having a good time like it's a little more fun to have some stories a little more amusing yeah i well i I think so, and also things just add up. You know, the longer you live, the more people you meet and the more stories you hear, especially if you engage in stories about this with people, the the more that you realize uh, how many people have had some sort of unexplainable experience. And you know what sucks about the whole thing, man. Whether it's a haunted house or an experience with a medium or... It is, it, you know, when you're when you go, you're not even going to know. Yeah. You won't know. Like they said in Sopranos, you know... It, it just, say that. just hits you. Yeah, you don't see it coming. Just fades to black real quick. Just goes to black. If you're lucky, I guess. Yeah. Could be. Even Worse. if it were more gradual, that moment yeah. is still going to be just a Getting, like, drug under a bus switch. for, like, six miles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, think, I, was thinking, I was thinking when you were telling those those stories about first responding and kind of walk, coming up to those scenes, being in the horror world, you know, we are so familiar with death imagery and blood and gore and and from these movies you know it almost desensitizes big horror fans to to that kind of thing until you see it in real life and then you realize that it's it's not a movie yeah it is is it's a kind of a life-changing thing so what do you think joe is um is there like uh more to it walking into the scene besides the visual um i could only speak to some experience dealing with um um a, a little more realistic gore. Um, mm. There's also like the smell. Oh man, it's something you can't describe, yeah. man. I, I we did a house. A guy had overdosed on the couch, and he'd been there for three weeks. No one even mm. checked on him, and he had melted through the couch to yeah. the concrete floor and ate through. Started eating through that. The bile was eating through oh, everything. Oh my god! So we had to dispose of the couch. Pleasant, the pleasant car- dreams, everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we had That's dispose of. Yeah, so the smell alone, I'll never forget the smell, man. Like sometimes I smell it. I would really? imagine. I'll be like, oh, it sticks with you. Yeah. What? Uh, that's, yeah. That's a terrible reminder. I thought you said smell. you could imagine having sex with me. No. no. I was like, well, I what? Mean, I can. He, he could imagine. He's got a <laughs> yeah, good imagination. That's true. I mean, a lot of people do. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Hey, Joe. Uh, talk. Well, thank you, you for sharing you that play story house with too. Me? <laughs> Did you want to be the husband or the wife? Uh, I wanted, I thought we were going to play Haunted House and we have to run away from a bunch of ghosts and, uh, and use our comfort to stay the night. Oh. Still haven't answered my question. <laughs> well, Find right. me in the basement. <laughs> I am going to wrap up the show for tonight. I, I do want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, last week I had summed up some thoughts about division and I'm going to do the same today. I, I had written down a couple of thoughts of mine about this and I wanted to sum up tonight's topic by sharing a few of those thoughts um last week you know we discussed the division that is being forced upon us and engaged in by so many of us um and we talked about the differences in opinions and cultures um well you know there's nothing that we all share as human beings more than the shared reality that we all will die and everything everyone that we know will die and every religion, every society, every culture, and all human beings are united by that truth, despite the very different ways that we all face that fact. We all want to find some sort of comfort somehow in the inevitable reality that we will someday no longer be on this earth. And whether you live your life in caution that you will ultimately be judged and either punished or rewarded for how you chose to live your life, or you simply exist 
with a confidence in your belief that the lights simply go off and nothing will further remain, uh, we still share that undeniable truth that we're going to die and we do not know for certain what will happen. You know, we all have our beliefs, and some of those beliefs are backed by you know, like an immovable conviction, a near certainty, that the stories that you've been taught are accurate and, in a sense, for some worth betting your life on. Um, I personally, I, I never try to, like, like, I have no interest in belittling one's religious beliefs if they bring that person comfort in their attempt to accept the reality of their impending death and the end of their existence as a human being on this planet. Uh, it's not until religion is used like as an excuse to pass judgment on others or cause violence towards others or to mandate any parameters in which they're forced to live their lives. It's not until those lines are crossed that I find any problems at all with the varied religious beliefs and how they find room to live within our society. Uh, basically, if it works for you and it doesn't harm or infringe on others, then whatever helps you prepare for... Oh, just a minute. Whatever helps you prepare for the inevitable loss that you're going to have... Um, and the, the death of loved ones and ultimately your own, whatever that is, it's something to be valued and respected because, you know, I know firsthand and others do that there's nothing more painful or more heartbreaking than losing someone that you love. The initial shock of it, um, it's a feeling that really doesn't compare to any other. And the days and weeks and months that follow, uh, they're a whirlwind of emotions from shock to extreme sadness to anger fear of your own mortality while trying to figure out how in the world you're ever going to live the rest of your life with that loss. But um, as the months turn to years, you know, we do learn to replace that loss and that emptiness with the fond and fantastic memories of life with that person, and they become immortal in our hearts and our memories. The pain of that loss never goes away, but we learn to live with it and accept it because there's no other option. More death will come, uh, including our own, and we have no choice but to face that fact. And that is the ultimate irony of life, that we're given this impossible world under impossible circumstances with the knowledge that it's all going to come to an end. How we handle that knowledge has an undeniable impact on how we live our lives. Al although my beliefs make me tend to believe otherwise, it, these lives might be the only ones we have. There's absolutely no doubt that all of our days are numbered and the clock never pauses. So uh, I do think it's important to try not to weigh yourself down with uh, the trivial or petty issues that make our days less than ideal. Because uh, life truly, I mean, I really, I really believe that life is a beautiful gift and it only benefits ourselves to enjoy it the best way we know how. Um, we have to try to find the right balance between pleasures and excess while making the most of that every day brings. And it's not easy. Life is challenging even for the most privileged and seemingly impossible for the most challenged. While I certainly cl never claim to know anything about the possibility of any additional existence, I do personally believe that any afterlife would have to consist of less challenges than this world offers. Uh, and I know that maintaining serenity in this life requires us to not fear the things we cannot change. And while we all have different levels of apprehension about death, some may compare directly to the strength of our beliefs, it's still up to us to live the very best lives we can during the very, very short time that we have here. So, that's the final note, and I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm sorry some of it was... We should mention We got a news, news break. Real quick. Is there a news yep, break? Yep, news break just came in at the very end of the show dick miller just died oh 90 years old man Damn. 90 90 yeah you remember him gremlins terminator sure. the yeah. burbs yep the howling yeah yeah man the original little shop of horrors he just died yeah. today a death during the death show oh man man and one of the best yeah i mean not best deaths but is no. there a best death he yeah. was in something more recently too, with, uh, with like I think it was burying your ex with like Anton yes. Yelchin. Yeah, yep, he was. The movie's in pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, man. So we end on a tribute to Dick Miller. 
Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the burbs. And thank you guys for joining us tonight. We will be back next week. Uh, I'm going to play us out tonight with uh, Denny's song that he just played live for us, a recorded version from last year. Uh, this is The Man in the Top Row. We will be live next week at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time right here. Thanks for joining us, guys. See you. See you around. Thanks, Nerdorama. Good night. Picture of a man named Bill with a sky of blue white clouds that fill a world where life is good, people are great. A young and vibrant, handsome man grew older, but please understand the sparkle in his eye was never dim. For all my life, a friend I had. Stood by me, he was my dad Taught me life through music, sports, and words A coach, a fan, a boss who cared He was tough but always fair He was always there, he's still there today The man in the top row The man who made me Help me when I'd be feeling down With a smile he turned my life around The man in the top row The man who saved me From my self-doubts and modest ways For successful happy days The man in the top row Walk this empty baseball field Where time my childhood memory sealed I look at the top row, he isn't there Oh Lord, he was a loving man He made mistakes but he tried again I hope that he's with you forevermore Up in the top row Never told me what to do He let me fall and held me through He really listened to what I had to say Now I have children of my own The ways and words are not my own Some are things that I learned from my dad Right, he'd say, a strife for less than a perfect place. So, family and your friends are number one. Now it's up to you, my son. I guess my job is done. Good luck in a top row. Man in the top row. The man who made me, he helped me when I'd be feeling down, and a smile he turned my life around. The man in the top row, the man who saved me, my self-doubts and modest ways, the more successful happy day. The man in the top row. has been the final note. Tune in next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time.